for joining us today here at Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. When we talk about soybean weed control, we often talk about our three pre-emerge strategy, three different modes of action used pre-emerge. But sometimes best laid plans, well, you know how it goes. We don't get it done and now it's post-emerge time and we've got to spray something. So just in case that happens to you later this year, we want to talk about the post-emerge residual options for soybeans. We'll also talk about post-emerge residual options for corn as well. And we're going to turn a little earlier in the season and talk about some pre-emerge herbicides in crops like alfalfa, sunflowers, and even sugar beets. So we've got a lot of different herbicide choices we're going to run through today. Well, all these herbicide things we're talking about, hopefully some of them will control our Weed of the Week. We'll share with you what the best strategies will be later in the show. We've got an Iron Talk coming up as well, but first, here's our Farm Basics. These days, it can be hard to make the math work in your soybean fields. With the Liberty Link system with Liberty Herbicide, it gets easier. A two plus bushel per acre advantage over as grow Roundup ready to extend soybeans means at least $18 more an acre for you. Plus lower system input costs and more complete weed control all adds up to at least $33 more an acre for your farm. That's smart math. Grow smart with BASF. As a farmer, one of the things I love about living in the northern United States is it gets really, really cold in the wintertime. Doesn't sound very fun to live in, <laughs> but I'll say this, in terms of farming, well, there are some advantages of really cold weather. Exactly. For example, winter often kills off a lot of insects and a lot of diseases. That's a good thing where yep. if you had a year-round warm climate, well, you'd have to be fighting those things all through the season. Okay, the other big thing is the effect on compaction and just on our soils in general. Today during our Farm Basics time, we're going to talk about the freeze-thaw effect. One thing about soils is if they get driven over with either heavy equipment that's just way too heavy in terms of pounds per square inch, or if you're out there really in the field with anything, when it's too wet, soils can be easily compacted. And when soils get pressed together hard, well, that hard part in the soil is going to stay for a long time unless it gets fixed. One thing that can certainly help fix those hard compacted areas in fields is something called the freeze thaw effect. So imagine you've got a tire track that's compressed. It gets some moisture in it. It freezes in the winter very hard. Then it warms up a little bit in the spring, freezes at night. Warms up a little bit, freezes at night, uh, both in the fall and the spring. So you have this thawing effect that's happening where ice kind of expands and then it contracts as it melts over and over and over again it can tend to loosen up some of those compacted areas while not completely fixing them. The whole point here is when you have a compacted soil roots just aren't able to penetrate through it. As farmers we obviously need that if we're going to raise good crops. Yes there are tillage things we can do to fix compaction. Yes we can get more calcium out there, improve the drainage, and basically stay off the field when it's wet. So all those things I agree they can happen but no farmer is ever going to have zero compaction. We're all going to have some degree of compaction and with this freeze thaw effect where we have expansion and contraction in our soils it does help a little bit with compaction. I'm not going to say it totally fixes it or anything like that but it absolutely helps. Well, it's certainly better on a vertical compacted area than it is on a horizontal compaction layer. Like say, for example, a farmer did tillage across the whole field at the same depth, and at the bottom of that tillage, uh, it led to some compaction. Well, what's gonna happen when it freezes and thaws? It expands up and down, but when it thaws out, it comes back together. With a vertical layer, if it expands outward, now when it thaws back out, it, it kind of settles down, you actually had a little bit of breaking of that compaction. That's why it's going to help somewhat on compaction, but it's not going to be a complete fix. So once again, there is a bright side to really cold temperatures for farmers. It's the freeze thaw effect. I'm glad you can find a bright side to cold temperatures. Let's see if you can find a bright side to having our weed of the week, Brian. This weed can really be a problem. We'll show you how to get it under control on your farm later in the show. 
Do you feel like there's never enough time to get everything done before planning? The window for spring work is quick and unforgiving. Give yourself the upper hand with the ProTil High Performance High Speed Disc. More and more farmers agree the ProTil is the right tool for spring field conditions and heavy residue management. Zero maintenance bearings, independent disc technology, oversized pins and bushings allow the ProTil to handle whatever field or conditions you can throw at it. Degelman High Performance Equipment. Your planter is the single most important piece of equipment on your farm because without a uniform stand, you can't reach maximum yield. That's why Harvest International set out to design a planter that takes advantage of the newest innovations in planter technology. Built tough for high speed and integrated with the latest precision enhancements, Harvest International planters ensure every seed you plant today puts more in your bin at harvest. Harvest International, planting the future. Leading the charge in strip tillage for more than a decade, the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm today. Increase your productivity with Hypro's dual React control system. The dual nozzle body design allows you to drive at the speed you want while maintaining the rate and droplet size you need. Hypro, helping you spray better. Invisible, invasive, underestimated, nematodes are stealing over 10% of yields, and current protection methods aren't enough. But a breakthrough seed treatment technology controls nematodes when they attack. Now offering Nemastrike technology. It provides broad spectrum control from the start and stays in the root zone as plants grow. Take back your bushels with Nemastrike technology. Strike where nematodes attack. We talk an awful lot about pre-emerge herbicides here on Ag PhD, but typically we're just talking about corn, soybeans, and wheat. Well, today we're going to discuss alfalfa, sunflowers, and sugar beets. You're probably thinking, alfalfa? Well, I only seed that once every four years. If I'm going to do a pre-emerge or soil applied herbicide, I got one shot to get this thing right. You're absolutely right about that. We have to do it right the first time when you seed that alfalfa because you want to have a great stand. If you can eliminate weed pressure and have a great stand, your alfalfa could theoretically last longer and it could ton out better every cutting for the next few years, so that's awesome. What I like the best is Eptam. You can use a half a gallon per acre of Eptam and do a really nice job knocking out grasses and small seeded broadleaves. What's the downside, Darren? Well, the downside is it needs to be instantly incorporated and it would be best if you incorporated it one way and then went across to, to kind of crisscross pattern throughout the field to really make sure it's worked in because Eptem has a high volatility point where not that it's going to drift to other fields, but it's just going to go up into the air and evaporate. And it's got a high vapor pressure. Yep, absolutely. All Eptem is, is it's old eradicane without the corn safener. Tremendous product though, that's absolutely what you want to use. Now, a lot of people have asked us over the years, hey, can I run out there with a low rate of trifluralin, like a pint of trifluralin? Well, yes, you can, but it's a little bit hard in the stand, and it's not nearly as good a product as a half gallon of Eptam. So when you're going to spend all that money on that alfalfa, and you're going to have this stand in there for several years, invest just a few extra dollars and get the good product, as opposed to something that is cheaper, but it's going to hurt the alfalfa and not be as good in terms of weed control. All right, when it comes to weed control, Brian, I don't know many crops that, that have more of a challenge than sunflowers. We talk to growers all the time, oh man, uh, I can do okay on grass control in sunflowers, but broadleaves can really take over a field. Here's the key. You've got to start with a great pre-program there, and you do have some good options. Now, if you're doing tillage, Sonlan is a nice option. Kind of like we talked about with the Eptam, it's got to be incorporated right away to get the most effectiveness out of it. Uh, and if you say, well, I'm in a no-till, or I don't really want to do much tillage out there, well, then Prowl would be another option. So you got a couple of uh, yellows that could be used there. 
The other one that could be used that's a big one is a PPO called Spartan. Now with Spartan, uh, that would be similar to Authority if you're a soybean farmer, same, same active ingredient. Uh, and in sunflowers, you could either use Spartan Straight or you could use Spartan Charge, which has an additional PPO in it for added burn down control. So Spartan Charge is just Spartan plus AIM. And going back to Darren mentioned the yellows. What he didn't mention was trifluralin. You could certainly use trifluralin if you wanted to as well. It's just Sonalan's a little bit better than trifluralin. And like he said, in sunflowers, we have a real problem with broadleaf control since you don't have any good post-emerge options. So what are you gonna do? Well, if it's me, there's no way I would ever tell a farmer to plant sunflowers without putting down both a yellow and Spartan. You have to have those two modes of action if you wanna have good broadleaf control. We're gonna talk about another crop where weed control has been difficult to achieve, sugar beets. As for the pre-emerge options, a little bit of pressure has been taken off for the growers that are using Roundup Ready sugar beets, but still, we wanna have a good stand establishment. We wanna take care of weeds early and using a pre definitely helps whether you have Roundup Ready beets or not. Nortron is still a product that can be used. It's not the cheapest product out there, but you could still use Nortron. We see a lot of growers that are banding Nortron, just trying to keep their costs down as much as they can. We also see some growers that are using Metolachlor, uh, which in the wrong soils and the wrong timings could possibly cause a little bit of injury or a little bit of response with the crop as well. Uh, but you don't have a whole lot of options for the pre-emerge control in sugar beets. I love how Darren said, Nortron's not the cheapest product. No, Nortron's about the most expensive product we know of as a pre-emerge, but the problem is we don't have many options, like he said, in sugar beets, so that's generally the direction that farmers we work with end up going. With the, the dual, yeah, you gotta use a really low rate, so are you gonna get much out of that? Not much compared to what you will out of Nortron. So in a lot of cases, Nortron's worth the money. If you haven't tried any, I'd at least try some on a few acres and see what you're finding for a difference. Well, you may not have corn and soybeans on your farm, or in addition to corn and soybeans, you have some other crops. There are pre-emerge weed control options in most crops. You just have to do a little bit of digging. And in some of the crops, like we talked about with sunflowers, you've got some great options. Uh, in front of alfalfa, we've got a great option with Eptam. Just take a look at what some of the different choices you have are because they could really add to your bottom line. Well, another thing that always adds to your bottom line is controlling our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to do it on your farm coming up later in the show. And how about the big man, Pro Germinator? Yeah, this guy's got some experience in the field. But look at his stats. You can't argue with those kind of results. You're right. I know a lot of teams wishing their phosphorus player had those kind of numbers. Right, but this guy's not just phosphorus. He's got the nitrogen, the potassium, the micros. All those just add up to his phosphorus game. And his game is good. Why do I farm? It's just something I've always wanted to do. Something I've known since I was my daughter's age. I think about what kind of farm I'm going to hand over to her. About how I can make it more successful, more sustainable. I talk to other farmers, with agronomists and advisors to help me make better decisions. To figure out what's working for them and how to make it work even better for my farm. Because when you farm, you have a responsibility to keep it growing. To look at a freshly planted field, a newborn calf, even your bottom line. Then ask yourself, how do I help this grow? How can I make it even more productive? I ask myself these questions every day. Because no matter what I'm doing, I'm still a farmer. At Estes Performance Concaves, we know how valuable your time is at harvest. That's why we designed the new XPR Concave System. The XPR System is the number one performance concave system on the market, surpassing the rest in both speed and efficiency, ensuring every last grain from your field gets into your tank. Plus, XPR Concaves work for all row crops. No more changing concaves, meaning you have less downtime. Take back your bushels this harvest. Get Estes Performance Concaves in your combine today. Your planter is the single most important piece of equipment on your farm. Because without a uniform stand, you can't reach maximum yield. That's why Harvest International set out to design a planter that takes advantage of the newest innovations in planter technology. 
Built tough for high speed and integrated with the latest precision enhancements, Harvest International planters ensure every seed you plant today puts more in your bin at harvest. Harvest International, planting the future. It's fun today talking about some crops other than corn and soybeans, but let's face it, there are a lot of acres of corn and soybeans out there, and when it comes to the pre-emerge options, sometimes you just don't get it done. So we're gonna to talk today about what are the residual options that you could use post-emerge in corn and soybeans. Well, yes, you can use residual options if you don't have a pre-down, but even if you do have a pre-emerge herbicide down, if you were driving around the country at all last summer, you saw weeds in corn and soybean fields, in some cases as bad as you may have ever seen them. So I would just suggest to you, is it enough to just put a pre down? In many cases, it's not. Either way, whatever your reason is, we want you to understand today, there are residual herbicides you can use early post. The key is you've got to get these products on early. We don't want to have them sprayed on great big weeds because we're talking about residual herbicides here. That means soil activity. Not only do we have to get them on, we have to get them reined in because you're not going to incorporate them. You're not going to have any dirt moving around probably in that field anymore. So you're, you're talking about having a good rain shortly afterwards. And remember with residual herbicides, they're either going to kill these weeds right at germination or shortly thereafter. So we need them on early. Well, if we're going to talk corn and soybeans, I'm going to take the corn side of this equation. When you think about post-emerge residuals for corn, well, hey, there's quite a few choices here. You could use group 15's post-emerge. Many of them are labeled up to 11 or 12 inch tall corn, so you have to look at the label of the product that you choose. But you've got some options there and you got a pretty nice window to put them out. Well, let's make it real simple here, Darren. Every pre that there is in corn, that I can think of anyway, you can use post other than something that contains balance or sharpen. All right, that's fine. So there's a lot of different products to choose from. And, you know, when you look at it, you could also mix atrazine into that equation too that we normally don't like to use pre, but now we're post and you can spray atrazine up to 12 inch tall corn. So if that works in your area and with your soils, I would add atrazine to some of these and it really does heat up some of those residual products. The group 15s are really residual only. And then of course the, the post-emerge contact products are also gonna have a little residual when I'm talking about products like status and the HPPDs. All right, let's talk about soybeans. That's the one where we're most concerned about weed control. Yes, we still want you to use the three pre's. Even if you get that on, whether you do or you don't, I'd still take a look at an early post-emerge group 15 product. We're talking Warrant, Outlook, Zidua, something like that, or a product that contains one of those. There is Warrant Ultra, there's Anthem Max. You've got a lot of choices out there that are combination products, but what I'm really focused on here is these residual only herbicides. They're not the greatest on grass or broadleaves when we're gonna use the reduced rates that we do in soybeans. But still, you're going to have some activity out there and some is a lot better than nothing. It's absolutely going to help you when it comes to weed control. One other thing that I want to mention, anytime you're using a residual herbicide real early post in corn or soybeans, you're most likely going to get a little bit of leaf response, maybe even a little bit of stunting. One of the things that was kind of interesting this year on our farm, we saw we had shortened the plants just a little bit where we sprayed some warrant, and because of that, we had more air movement through, which meant we had a little bit less white mold. So it was kind of unusual, we don't typically see that, but if you can shorten those beans just a little bit, sometimes there's an advantage to it. A lot of times we say, oh, leaf response, crop response, stunting of the plants, that's gonna be bad. It actually, this year, helped yield on our farm. One other thing that I wanna comment on too is soybeans. Now you may be thinking, I'm gonna get a little residual out of Flexstar, maybe I'm using some Pursuit or uh, a number of different post-emerge options, first, first rate. rate. Uh, and others, yeah, you'll get a little bit of residual out of those, but don't be oversold. You're not gonna get season long residual and certainly adding one of those group 15s to the mix, the group 15s will have more residual than any of those other products in terms of weed killing. Power. Right, weed killing. These products like Pursuit, Flexstar First Rate, they're gonna last way longer in the soil than the group 15s, but in terms of weed killing power, don't expect too much out of them. So whether you got a pre-emerge soil residual product down or not, post-emerge residuals can certainly help you get further into the season holding weeds down. One of those weeds you may be trying to hold down is our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop it coming up next.
The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Corteva AgriScience, Agriculture Division of Dow DuPont. Finish the fight against tough weeds with the Enlist Weed Control System. Weeds are tough. But we're tougher. With unrivaled weed control. Reduced drift. And near zero volatility. So, who's tough now? <laughs> Our Weed of the Week is an invasive tree species. It's called Russian Olive. In some areas, this has been declared a noxious weed. You know, you think about it, you say, wow, I gotta stop a tree, basically? That's, that's a lot harder than stopping weeds. Uh, Brian, we talk about weeds and we say, get them when they're a couple yeah. inches tall at most. <laughs> well, here's a tree. True. How are you gonna stop that? Okay, whenever we start thinking about killing trees, first product I think of is Tordon. That's got tremendous residual. Problem is, you can't use it near trees you want to keep, and you can't use it anywhere near fish. All right, well, with Russian olive, a lot of times we see it in riparian areas showing up there. Well, that's right near water. Well, you're not going to use Tordon there. So then you go to Milestone. Okay, Milestone doesn't kill as many trees, but it's okay on Russian olive. There's also Triclopyr or Remedy Ultra. You could use that, has no residual. Milestone and Tordon have lots of residual. So those are really the three big choices. Then you start looking at, hey, will 2,4-D get it? Will Roundup get it? Something like that. Yeah, those products can have some activity, but personally, I'd rather see you use the Remedy Ultra or the Milestone. The real key here is to get the tree when it's actively growing. You've got to have foliage on there that's not under drought stress, and then you have to get great coverage. So just use smaller droplets and high pressure and get good coverage throughout that Russian olive if you want to get it under control. Now, let's talk about if you have this Russian olive in and amongst some other trees or shrubs that you want to keep. Now, what are you gonna do? Well, that gets really challenging to kill one type of tree and not kill another type of tree. So usually what we're gonna suggest is you're gonna have to cut them off. What a lot of people will do when they cut off trees is that's where they'll paint on either Remedy Ultra or Tordon or Milestone. With the Tordon, what can happen a lot of times is that Tordon will go all down through that root system now, and now you've left little traces of Tordon out in your soil. That's not a real good thing if you've got other trees around there. Same kind of thing with Milestone. With Remedy, we don't see that as much, so that's probably the product that I'm going to pick if I cut my tree and then wanted to paint something on. What do you think? Well, I, I agree. I think that's going to be the safer of the options, but you know, normally what we're seeing is this creeping out into areas where you don't want it, like out into pasture and that kind of thing where it's taking over the land. Well, there uh, it's easy. Yeah, then, then you just spray over the top and you don't have to worry. Yep, and again, if it's me, I'd use Tordon anytime I can because it has great residual kills almost every tree, but otherwise Milestone is obviously much safer around fish. It's all the time we have for our Weed of the Week, but Iron Talk is coming up next. This agro liquid line is something special. A lot of really impressive playmakers. Take a look at Sure K. This guy is an enigma. But wrap your head around the exceptionally high plant response when compared to conventional potassium sources, the research proven plant availability, plus flexible application options and mixing capabilities. Really stellar performance stats. Sure K is a true standout, and that's a winning goal on any field. If you're looking to expand your farm's grain handling, you want everything to be fast and efficient. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all-around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt and a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. That's fast enough to fill a semi in six minutes. Plus, our hood is designed to gently direct the flow of grain straight down, keeping your crop in condition. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. 
At Estes Performance Concaves, we know how valuable your time is at harvest. That's why we designed the new XPR Concave System. The XPR System is the number one performance concave system on the market, surpassing the rest in both speed and efficiency, ensuring every last grain from your field gets into your tank. Plus, XPR Concaves work for all row crops. No more changing concaves, meaning you have less downtime. Take back your bushels this harvest. Get Estes Performance Concaves in your combine today. feel like there's never enough time to get everything done before planting? The window for spring work is quick and unforgiving. Give yourself the upper hand with the ProTail High Performance High Speed Disc. More and more farmers agree the ProTail is the right tool for spring field conditions and heavy residue management. Zero maintenance bearings, independent disc technology, oversized pins and bushings allow the ProTail to handle whatever field or conditions you can throw at it. Degelman High Performance Equipment. Avoid the V-shaped pattern of injury caused by chemical buildup in your booms. The Express end cap from Hypro eliminates the dead ends that lead to herbicide buildup and provides easy access to your booms, giving a complete flush between applications. Hypro, helping you spray better. Leading the charge in strip tillage for more than a decade, the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm today. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. There are 6,272,640 square inches in an acre. We count it. Why? Because we designed the Tiger Mate 255 field cultivator and 2000 series early riser planter to maximize every single one. So when you create the most level seed bed in the industry and target a nickel size area to plant a seed and never miss, you'll know in high efficiency farming, there's one name to count on. Case IH. Rethink productivity. Learn more at caseih.com slash every inch. Fall fertility applications are way down across much of North America, which presents some challenges in all crops this spring. I'll share some ideas for soybean fertility during today's Iron Talk. With some crops like corn, one of the quickest and easiest ways to boost a fertility program is by putting some fertilizer in the furrow at planting time. With soybeans, you just can't do a whole lot of that. Sure, you can put a gallon or two in the furrow, depending on soil types and other factors. However, to fertilize soybeans, you need to plan ahead exactly where you're going to place those nutrients. Here are three times that you should have equipment set up to handle soybean fertility. The first is planting time. Now, I know, I just said you can't put much in furrow, but don't forget about using a 2x2 placement. This is going to be very important for corn as well over the next few years with all the different things we're trying to do right around that seed zone. You can safely put a lot more fertilizer just off to the side if you're set up to do it in a 2x2. The world record soybean grower uses a 2x2 on both sides of the row and sees a great benefit. The second way you should be set up to put on fertilizer on soybeans is foliar applications. If you've got a sprayer, you can put certain liquids right in with your fungicide, insecticide, or herbicide application. Check with your agronomist in advance to make sure that you're at the right growth stage to get the maximum benefit from the foliar and the other treatments that you're using. Also, since you won't be applying a huge amount of fertilizer this way, think of foliar feeding as a way to stimulate the roots to pick up more of your soil fertility. Third, deep banding. We've really seen good results with deep banding fertilizer primarily in the fall ahead of soybeans, especially on medium to heavy textured soils. But you could certainly do this in the spring as well if soil conditions favor these applications. Now, if you're doing it in the spring, use liquid fertilizer if possible. You can boost your soybean yields this year even if you didn't get your fertilizer applied last fall. Get set up to apply the plant food required to reach those high yield goals right now. That's all for today's Iron Talk and now back to the show. That's all the time we've got for today's show, but before we go, we want to invite you to tune into the Ag PhD radio show. We are on Sirius XM channel 147 at 2 p.m. Central each weekday. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD.